2004, and perhaps going back to 2002, with uh, the election, the parliamentary victory in 2002, where my good friend, Mr. Gorbulin, said, the world has changed. Our world has changed. It's no longer a single party. It's no longer the party of power. It was certainly no longer the party of power of which he was a part. 2004, the Orange Revolution. And here was a su supreme example of what I would call parliamentary democracy of the people. This was the Maidan Parliament where the people came together to protest against the abuses of power by their government. They declared the government illegitimate and they did this peacefully. And they did this in a remarkably interesting way. They went to the courts, they went to the parliament, the Rada, and they went to the presidential administration, and they went to the election commissions on foot together in the freezing cold day and night and declared their principles of, what were those principles? No corruption, democratic governance, free and fair elections, thieves to jail. You remember the slogans, many of you. You were there. I was there every day and every night, so I witnessed it and was inspired by it as an outsider. And in a way, I was transformed uh, by this magnificent expression of human dignity. The, age of, the ages of humiliation were over. The Ukrainian people rose up from their knees and stood as free men. I saw something of that spirit in the Al Jazeera transmissions of what took place in Cairo, where the Egyptian ordinary man stood in the face of of tyranny, of single party government, and said, I am a free man, I am a free man. You remember uh, several of those magnificent Egyptians who put their hand on their heart and said, I am free, I am free. This is liberty, this is liberty. I saw that in the Maidan. That was a transforming moment for Ukraine and I think it is the benchmark of every activity that's taken place since. And as Orest and Nadia and Bodan pointed out for us, the failures that have taken place since the promises that were made on the Maidan are taking their due course, their unfortunate path. What is the future of the strategic partnership? I'll return to that. It seems to me that we are bound together, Americans and Ukrainians, in a common belief of what it means to be a free person. For me, as, a, as an outsider, I could see that and feel it on the Maidan. This was the real thing. This is what is believed. This is the basis of governance that matters. This is the basis of strategic partnership between democratic societies. We all know that our first 20 years of history as a new nation 
conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition. You know what the proposition is. was rocky. We started with a unitary political system. There were no parties. And if anything, there was the party of Washington, George, not DC. And then this was followed very rapidly by internecine conflict in the first several Congresses between the Federalists and the Democrats, the North and Virginia and the South and the West. Those conflicts were personified by the squabbles between Hamilton and Jefferson, which we're living with still today. That's the fundamental divide in, in the nature of our democratic values. We see it today in our present struggles in Congress and uh, certainly in our budget. Jefferson, ambassador to France, advisor to the French Revolution, a revolution detested by Adams and by Hamilton. Jefferson, described as a Jacobin. Adams, described as a monarchist. These were the stuff of newspaper articles of the time, uh, and the press at that time, free as it was, was scurrilous and reprehensible, and rarely newspapers of record, but they expressed the turmoil, the great changes, uh, and the possibilities of the future. When de Tocqueville went out to see the new, new state and learned from it, he found all of that turmoil in, in uh, advanced forms beyond the 20, first 20 years. So what is the state of the strategic partnership? I would say that it's perilous, that it's very much dependent on adherence and belief and continued effort at transforming the Ukrainian state of governance into real democracy. The great issues that uh, the Ukrainian American community raised in the last year of intellectual freedom, the freedom of universities uh, in Lviv, Catholic University, the threats to Kiev Mohila as well, and to intellectual freedom generally, the uh, pressure on journalists, the, uh, pre the uh, narrowing of a uh, variety of opinion in, in television, the difficulties of, of conveying accurate information to the public. We raise these issues with the foreign minister, and he answered, uh, as did his minister, uh, both Lavrinovich and Akimova about the universities. And I want to mention this before I close because I think it's a very positive development and, and worthy of recognition as such. They said their intent was to strengthen the university system they pointed out that there are 800 universities in Ukraine who call themselves universities. And many of them, if not most, are of dubious value to anyone. Mail order shops, uh, diploma mills, where education is not the first motive. 
the prophet is. <laughs> they said it would not affect Lviv or Kiev Mohila. That was not their intention. That they had internal debates with Tabachnik on the wisdom of his proposal and that they would listen to the advice of the established universities about how to deal with this problem of legitimization of academic institutions in a way that does not uh, affect adversely intellectual freedom. I know that uh, Lviv and Kiev Mohila uh, are working directly with the with the Yanukovych people, and I expect that they will come up with a reasonably sensible outcome. But it is because the issue was raised forthrightly in Lviv and in Kiev Mohila uh, that a solution is possible, and it's proof in my mind of the viability and utility of civil society because it was raised there. You heard it. You protested. You told Larry Silverman about how aggrieved you were. And I think there are results. So my, my view is that in the long run, we will be strategic partners we will be fellow democratic nations and we'll be able to deal with uh, the unimaginable difficulties in the future as well as uh, unimaginable uh, benefits from our technology, our intellectuals, and the work of our people who see the world in so many common ways. So I think the strategic partnership is strong and will get stronger. Thank you.